I would like to first uh, welcome uh, everyone uh, on the Saturday that we are going to listen to a very exciting talk on zero energy buildings uh, by Dr. Enrico Fabrizio. Uh, he is an associate professor at uh, Politec Politecnico di Torino and he has several awards uh, on uh, sustainable cities and he is the editor of the sustainable cities and society journal and there are many more accomplishments but i uh, i want to uh, give the stage back to him uh, first um, i actually skipped the part uh, i am uh, my name is jana najar i will be the moderator of the session and I'm an associate professor at Bahçeşehir University, uh, the Faculty of Engineering and uh, Natural Sciences, Energy Systems Engineering Department. I myself uh, work in the field of zero energy solutions like buildings at uh, zero carbon towards uh, reaching Paris Agreement uh, goals. And um, today I'm very excited to uh, be the moderator of the session by Dr. Fabrizio, uh, as I talked about. He's actually going to be talking about the current stage and the future of zero energy buildings. Uh, so um, he's actually uh, going to start his session now. I'm going to give the floor to Dr. Fabrizio. And uh, thank you for all for being here. And um, we look forward to hearing from you, Dr. Fabrizio. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kanan, for your very kind uh, introduction. Everything is, do you hear me well? So I will share my screen now. And start my presentation. Okay. Okay. Is it okay? Can I start? So, a good day to everyone. And let me first thank the scientific team and the organizer of this uh, exciting event for uh, having invited me for uh, this talk uh, on the mutual relation between the zero energy building, the research, and the practice. I would like to start from a bit of uh, history, uh, I would say, or maybe there as uh, in the beginning was. So in the beginning, it was VZ, for example, we were at the turn of the new century. And uh, this example, as well as the other one, the next slide from Freiburg, Germany, the sun and shift, the solar uh, shift uh, on Freiburg was considered for at least a decade as uh, one of the major examples of zero energy buildings. And uh, these places uh, have also been places of pilgrimage for architecture students, for young professionals uh, eager to keep up to date with the latest news. But um, where are we today? The concept of zero energy has been applied to a variety of them building types and settlement. Uh, here we have some example which can be considered the most representative for US, for example. This is a, a office building. Uh, this is considered as the first zero energy store in, in US. This is an example from Italy. So quite different buildings. But the zero energy principle has also been scaled to the district and research centers around the world were established on, on that topic. So in the end, 20 years after the introduction of the concept of zero energy building, now this is one of the main uh, topic of, um, of the construction industry and also one of the main topic of any course, any uh, scholars on uh, energy conscious design. 
What it is evident is also that the large bit about zero energy buildings has been one of the main drivers of innovation to construction in the past decade. Because what may have been seen as a theoretical objective uh, at the beginning uh, to be defined, to be discussed, for example, who can ever forget the uh, standard classical Cellini's papers on zero energy buildings, zero cost buildings, zero emission buildings, etc. So what at the beginning was merely a theoretical objective has become a real construction standard. And most of the new buildings in various countries, at least all the new buildings in Europe, are now high performing buildings. In Europe, they are called nearly zero energy buildings. But achieving high performance targets has become considering all the, uh, the Europe and also all over the world. In fact, the zero energy building target has been the driver of a large amount of research activity over the last years in the field of building energy performance, as can be in by the diagram that reports the research paper uh, from 2002 to 2020 on the topic of ZEP. This is due certainly to the studies that were carried out by EU member countries to implement the nearly ZEP requirement. So the Energy Performance Buildings Directive from the first version in 2002 to the, third, to the second recast of 2018 has been crucial to start and to keep uh, driving this decarbonization process in the building sector. Now, despite the differences that can be seen uh, between the different countries on how nearly ZEP are defined and implemented, as can be seen in this, in this table on the, on the right, um, the legislative requirements are not just an obligation, but have led towards a new generation of research studies on the global energy performance of the building and encompass various technologies and approaches, both numerical and experimental. At the European level, the cost optimal approach was established in 2010 in order to guide them to define the minimum energy performance level as a function of the cost, Article 9 of the first request of the, of the PBD. This approach has been proved. Uh, to be one of the main theoretical frameworks to analyze to design new energy efficient building. So, if we look at the results of such activities, apart from the new uh, legislative requirement, but the result from in terms of research and in terms of practice, uh, we can see that a short study conducted uh, on these results uh, is reported in this slide. Um, the approach is summarized in the five steps that are reported below in the definition of the reference buildings to the determination of cost optimal level. Usually, those results are reported in our global cost, which is the cost, the, the initial cost for uh, the running cost, the installation cost, and the replacement cost, the energy cost, uh, and following a normative standard. The function of the primary net primary energy use. So, um, in this slide, there are some of the results that can be found. And what can be seen at first is that there is a gap between the energy performance that corresponds to the minimum cost, the energy target, the zero energy on the x axis. These graphs report the resulting cost optimal values of varieties for single family on the top and multifamily buildings on the bottom with renewable energy sources. Even if we consider the main climate zone of the case studies, we split the case studies into the climate zone, we are not yet able to find out cost optimal ranges with values that are sufficiently small. Uh, but how are buildings made? Let's look at the U values, for example, of such cost optimal building. These show the resulting cost optimal technologies in different climate zones, the one uh, of the Copen climate classification. There is not uh, a clear relationship between the climate and the U value of the construction. And uh, if we look at the energy systems that are used into this next graph, uh, which reports the frequency 
of the various HVAC technologies, it is even harder to standardize the design strategies and the technologies to be used. The same performance level can be reached by different combination of design strategies. This is a bit dazzling, a bit confusing, because if asked the recipe of a zero energy building, everyone knows the answer, which is the super insulation, the mechanical ventilation with data quarry, the system efficiency, and finally the exploitation of renewable energy sources. Despite the differences that arise when we look at how zero energy buildings are defined around the world, the primary feature of a residential ZEB are this one, clearly. However, is it as simple as that? This recipe of ZEB is from being as trivial as it may appear. The previous studies on the cost optimal uh, zero energy building showed us that a ZEB design that best a certain location will not necessarily be the optimal one for another location. And also that the current design the energy building not necessarily will be resilient in the future or able to adapt to climate change. This is why uh, this topic is still of great interest for academic researchers and also for the practice. Since the beginning of what we may call this ZEP journey, a great emphasis uh, was on creating, creating and validating accurate energy models of the buildings. This was because it was clear to the research community uh, first and then also to the professional and to the industry world next that in order to define and reach the ZEP target it was necessary to have tools to accurate estimate the energy performance. This has given rise to great success of the building relation. Uh, just to give an example uh, in 2005, Energy Plus was considered as a research software tool. It was known mostly from, from scholars of the academia in university, while now it has so many interfaces, also commercial interfaces. It is used by so many different users, professionals around the world, etc. So in 10 years, 15 years, everything has changed. Now, the summary uh, of the main topic I'm going to present now is reported here. Um, these are the main activities that I think really have the potential to improve how we design and build and also live our zero buildings. The first topic is to go beyond the cost optimal approach, so all the things that have gone beyond the cost optimal approach namely the simulation-based optimization method and also uh, the uh, problem of optimizing in an integrated fashion, in an integrated way, the energy demand side and the energy supply side of the methods that are able to optimize at the same time energy demand and energy supply options. Also the uh, problem of the exploitation of renewable sources is quite important now in the research activity on zero energy building. And I'm going to present also some act on the trade-off between the energy efficiency of the buildings and all the stand and the exploitation of the renewable energy. Finally, I would like to talk in my last part of the presentation to the uh, great experiences of the solar decathlon China 2008, uh, when we conducted a real and successful design to construction to operation process for a prototype of zero energy building. Now, uh, I would like first to concentrate on the relation between optimization and zero energy buildings. Many studies on zero energy buildings are based on optimization from manual and trial error approaches to very refined computational models and even since there is always the need to find a solution that is able to perform well in a scenario of conflicting requirement. Optimization functions uh, frequently are multi-objective 
and the complexity of the relations between inputs and outputs of the building model makes the task of optimizing a building into a zero energy building a quite complicated task uh, that is still of interest for researchers. Within also a contest of emerging powerful calculation tools, uh, computational power and uh, the regulatory framework which is able to uh, drive a new analytical approach there is uh, i think space for uh, investigating and developing different methods for addressing the building design optimization problems let me present a framework that combines both the optimization and the holistic approach this is how the problem of designing a zero energy building could be standardized and formalized. There is a set of design options here, an objective function minimized, which should express the trade-off between technical and economic feasibility, and the whole set of constraints, which express the scenario under which the Z problem is to be solved, the modeling assumption to predict the performance. The set of decision parameters to which the objective function is related should reflect the real design strategies related to the envelope, the systems, and the renewable energy source, the exploitation of renewable energy. A new approach, which is called the energy demands and supply side simultaneous optimization, combines the capabilities of the optimization with the one of the integrated simulation. And I think it is best suited to solve the design problem of Z rather than the approaches that are based on a sequential set of optimization strategies like first the envelope, then the system, and finally exploitation of renewable energy sources. The decision parameters and range of the variation uh, define the design space, which is uh, quite complicated. Uh, and it is composed resulting set of all the possible design options. Some design parameters are um, physical properties, while others instead are design choices. So uh, the challenge is to take both types into account in the same building energy model. In order to do that, we created a sort of control center with Boolean variables able to switch between the alternative to take care of both physical property and design alternative and set the constraints. Following this concept, the model is ready to be coupled with the optimization. The optimization relies on the use of different algorithms um, or different software tool. In this slide, it is indicated general, but you can use any different uh, optimization algorithm, also self-made. Uh, self the algorithm drives the selection of the values to be input to the building energy model. Uh, and this is done at each iteration stage. For each combination of parameters value, the simulation is run, the objective function is computed, and its value is returned to the optimization program, which selects the next set of values to assign to the parameter. This iterative process keeps running until the stopping criteria is reached. The stopping criteria can be the maximum number of iteration or can be also the minimization of the objective function. The first results that can be found from such approach is that we can demonstrate that finding cost optimal values of energy demand parameters only and finding cost optimal values on both the energy demand and supply gives different results. So what I would say is that between a sequential optimization like the triangle, like first the envelope, second system and third renewable source and trying the integrated optimization, there are some differences that are not negligible. So this can be seen in the table where the results of the residential case studies are reported and we can notice that the variation between the two approaches 
concern most of the parameters, the thermal insulation, the window type, the window area. This also results in a variation of the net the energy needs for heating and cooling, QH, QT, especially the QH. Uh, and one of the main results of such approach is that the envelope cannot optimally design disregard also the energy system and the exploitation of renewable sources and vice versa. And this since the early design stages. Then a second consequence that can be drawn is that exploration of the domain of the solutions has the same importance of the optimization itself. In particular, the exploration of the solutions that are just in the neighborhood of the optimal solution, let's say plus 3%, 5%, they are near the optimal solution. So if we look at the variation of the parameter in this neighborhood of the optimal solution, some parameters can be characterized high robustness around the optimal solution, while others a high instability. So the second one on the right and on the bottom is a parameter which is characterized by robustness around the optimal in the neighborhood. So it means that a centimeter relation thickness can be seen, can be regarded really as the values. Instead, uh, the parameter top, which is all an insulation thickness, but for another uh, components of the envelope of this study is characterized by a low robustness. Is not reliable. There is also the need, studying such problems, to find other ways of representing the results of the design of the set, especially of representing the complexity of the conflicting requirements of the various design parameters. On the left, you can here, you can see a surface plot of the trade-off between the solar thermal, the soft voltage, and the global cost of the multifamily building under the physical constraints of the roof surface or the solar surface, which is available and which is a limited value. On the right instead, there is a radar chart which represents the optimized values in red assumed by the various decision parameters which are represented in each bar, dotted bar, although the values in blue that assume the decision parameters in the neighbor of the optimal solution with the blue web, the blue cow web. Again, this can be used to uh, consider the robustness of the solution. Another important topic for the ZEB study is to know which is the trade off between the uh, building efficiency, the system efficiency, and the renewable energy sources exploitation. In this work, we studied how the solar cooling system, the solar cooling system, make all the space cooling energy demand as well as the domestic hot water energy demand in summer of a multifamily building and uh, therefore also increase the renewable energy ratio of this building. The chart which is on the right reports the global cost and the non renewable primary energy use as a function of the renewable energy ratio. Each small dot represents a different combination of design parameters, the solar cooling systems, um, and uh, each uh, larger dot, the design optimal, present some particular design solution. It's interesting to note that the global cost increases in order to reach higher value of renewable energy ratio, to note how this increase. And uh, in in picture plot on the right, on the bottom, on the top, it is shown the linear correlation that exists between the non-renewable energy use and the renewable energy ratio for this particular case studies. You can find many other uh, animation and, uh, and results also on this uh, paper which is published on Renewable Energy Journal. Now uh, I would pass on the solar decathlon case studies.
Tola Decathlon case studies is really interesting because it deals with a, a transition between design to construction to operation of a building. It is proved that it is possible to reach the ZEP target uh, from the technical point of view, but special attention has to be paid uh, in the transition between the design, the construction, the operation of such types of, uh, of build. Um, with large works that turns around a solar decathlon competition, obviously, I would like to present uh, here the work we did in order to optimize the prototype, considering both the variables related to design, variables related to the operation of the building at the same time by exploiting the capability of the solar uh, building and uh, uh, using the um, simulation-based optimization tailored for the ZEP optimization design process. So in one way, you may see this application as a, a sort of application of what a real application of what I presented you before. The Sol Decathlon competition was a unique opportunity to uh, try to move from research to, to application. Most of you will know what Sol Decathlon contests are. Um, teams of students uh, that can be from the whole world are advised by teachers and they have to conceive, to design, to build and operate during uh, two weeks of a contest, a very energy efficient building, which has to be innovative and actually has to be powered only by solar source. So it has to be an autonomous building. There are many contests around the world. They first started in the US. Uh, we took part of the solar decathlon China that started in 2016 and was ended in 2018. I was within the faculty advisors of the Scott Polito team, which is a team composed by the students from South China University of Technology and students from Polytechnic of Italy, which is my university. In particular, I was responsible for the energy engineering topics uh, for work with students. The competition took place in Zhou, which is uh, the solar city of China, in one way which is on the south of Beijing and took place in the summer. The prototype uh, that the team presented is called the uh, long plan. Um, it is called long plan because it is intended to be a low rise house for micro renovation of existing neighborhood in traditional Chinese settlement. This is why uh, it has those two lateral walls that are opaque, that do not have any openings. Okay, this is the reason for this construction. There are then some specifications on the prototype. The prototype has two floors. It is a um, single family house. So the, the scope of the Soro de Carton is to build a single family detached house. It has two floors for 140 square meter floor area. Uh, the structure is a modern steel structure. The building plans can be divided into different sectors. An integral wall that contains all the distribution pipes, hot water, the domestic hot water, the electrical, the connection. A service belt, which is a sort of slice in the house that contains the system, the, the, the band, etc and the living belt, which is the section composed by the conditioned rooms, like living room, kitchen, and the bedroom. This is a view of the prototype built at the site of the contest in Dejo. It is important to know that it was previously built at the school uh, of the Chinese student in Guangzhou. The South China University is of technology is from Guangzhou in, uh, in China. This is important uh, because uh, later it will be useful for 
uh, validating and calibrating the energy model of the building. This aspect of, uh, let's say, building two times the same prototypes. The first one, the school, and the final one at the uh, contest of the site. In this is also a schematic of the HVAC that is radiant, that combines a radiant floor in some uh, rooms and uh, um, variable air volume uh, for the uh, air ventilation to the control of the pollutants and for the control of the relative humidity. The systems are placed within this sort of integrated wall, this service wall that is on one of the two large sides of the slice of this long plan prototype. First of all, we wanted to have a reliable building energy model. Thus, we did a multi-step calibration, which is divided into a first calibration of the envelope parameter and based on free floating temperature measurement on the prototype, and then a second and final calibration step that considers both the envelope and the system parameters. The measurements were done in Guangzhou when, for the first time, the prototype was built. Inside, we can see also the thermal zoning of the and detail of the energy modeling. These are measurements from uh, the indoor environment, but there are also measurements of the energy use of the HVAC systems. Um, as it is quite common, uh, first of all, we did a sensitive analysis using the Morris method in order to identify the most influencing parameters among the one the input data. But within the large set of input data of an energy model, we selected uh, some, which are this one, input data, uh, that we tested with the sensitivity analysis through the Morris method. So. Uh, the parameters that were selected for the free floating calibration are this one, and then for the final calibration, the other one. There are some parameters that fall within the two, the two calibration. The results of the calibration are reported here in, uh, in this slide. On the bottom, there is the table of the standard guidance of fitting items that are currently used for the calibration of building and model. The values are quite good. Um, the simulation after final calibration was able to catch the thermal behavior of the building, especially when it was, uh, it was uh, uh, used the HVC systems. And um, the final construction of the prototype was done in strict relation with the results of the calibration and the simulation activities. So what I'm going to say is that the simulation and the calibration gave us some important knowledge that students were able to uh, implement during the final stages of the construction into the final site of the design. Now, when, um, in the end, obviously, we wanted to win, so we tried to optimize the building considering the context score. This is the main schematics of the uh, optimization for the context score. First of all, having calibrated the uh, energy models, we had a reliable energy model. Then. Applying the simulation based optimization method, we optimized the con score. So it was necessary to set up a proper optimization tool to support the design and the construction and also the operation, okay, even if it's not really uh, indicated, to support the operation of the building due contest. Okay. So let's go a bit further within the contest rule of solar decathlon. In particular, these are the one that's decathlon China, but they are quite similar to the solar decathlon in China. There are 10 sub contests Five, the first one, are evaluated by some juries. So, uh, juries review the document from the design to the construction phases. 
while the other five are task performance score or measured score. So some scores are based on monitored values, uh, independent monitored values. Other scores are based on task performance. So I would like to uh, use in the washing machine at least one time a week. I would like to use the kitchen following certain rules, etc. So this is because the solar availability is the same. Also, the energy demand uh, that should be uh, of each prototype should be the same. So there is space to optimize the solar test um, final points because the old points are 1000 points by optimizing some parameters of the design not many parameters because the large part of the time was done but some parameters on the operation of the, of the building so uh, in order to construct this objective function uh, we have to know which are the contest rules these are examples of the main contest rules you can see penalties for the temperature variations for the relative humidity for the C2 level for the uh, PM 2.5 level uh, you can see that looking at the temperature if the temperature is within 22 to 23 there is no penalty then uh, I'm going to add less points if the temperature exceeds 23 if the temperature is below 22 at one point I do not have any, any more points, so the penalty is 100%. And this score is able then to find both environment parameters, indoor environment parameters like the uh, classification of the indoor environment and also the energy one, because the final, which is 80 points, so it's not bad, 80 points, it is on net zero energy balance. So. If I'm going to the net zero energy uh, balance, I'm going to take all 80 points. If I'm going to consume a bit more, so the balance is negative, meaning that I'm not reaching the zero energy balance, I will have a penalty. Okay. So the final objective was how will it be possible to optimize the contest point, these 180 points. We had to set up uh, again a simulation based optimization setup for the contest period. So, doing the simulation only for the uh, two weeks, the 40 days of the contest period. The time step of the simulation were really refined, so one minute, because we had to study also the variation of the uh, HVAC um, operation and etc. Um, and we had to uh, implement some analytical method for the simulation of the pollutant. Uh, again, the particles wall optimization algorithm was used and uh, a combination of both discrete and tenuous optimization variable was used. In the um, uh, schematics, you can see the combination of the different tools which are the transit simulation tool for the building uh, the contour for the simulation of the uh, internal pollutant, the optimizer, which is the GenOpt one, and some uh, manual routines on MATLAB in order to uh, make all the uh, software to, to able to work together. Um, all the, many other specifications can be found on this paper, which is published on, on energy building. So the optimization problem is quite complicated, it's quite large. The design space, considering all the design alternatives in space, uh, it will take some ages to simulate all those design alternatives. But we need to do it in just uh, some, some days because the contest is during 14 days. So which are the optimization variables? Some are related to the envelope construction. The one that were able to be optimized in the meantime, between those construction and the final construction in the job. So the first construction at the school 
uh, at the Sapchino Kami University School in Guangzhou, and the final construction in the job. Um, then the operation of the shadings, which are typically some values from that uh, concern the operation, the uh, PV array, the set points of the system. The set point was quite important because the optimization of the regulation of the set point, because you can see that you have some penalties not on the set point, but on the temperature you obtain in the house. So uh, we had to have a building model that was able to simulate the real temperature within the house, starting from the set point which is imputed into the HV system. Okay, and this uh, obtaining for this we obtained some more point. Again, the control of the movable shapes, the internal movable shape control, the control of the ventilation, especially the uh, time for turning on and turning off the ventilation in order to guarantee the best uh, indoor environmental quality. Because what it is interesting is that uh, for some points of the objective function, I would like to use the ventilation, I would like to use the HVAC system to guarantee the temperature, to guarantee a correct um, indoor environmental uh, quality, uh, lower value of pollutant parameters, but ventilation and HVAC consumes energy. So I will be going to be penalized for the energy use. So the trade-off between the environmental quality and the energy use had to be studied by means of this optimized situation. These are the results. Uh, the results reported in terms of the percentage improvement and the objective function. We have to keep in mind that the greatest value we may be able to obtain was 180. So we started from 162 and in the simulation we arrived to 176, which is 9% higher than the initial scenario. This uh, led us uh, to obtain a maximum around 177 points. This was uh, like, say, on, uh, on the paper, so uh, not in the real context, but we can see later that also in the real context, applying the results of the optimization was really uh, a successful choice. This is the number of iterations that leads to a better exploration of the, of the multiple design alternative. In the end, the end of the story is that um, what changes between the start and the optimization? We have in this table the parameters value, we have the objective function points, initial and output, and the changes, the variation in uh, the different in the different uh, um, parameters. So some of them are quite important. I'm going to concentrate only on some. For example, the temperature set point of variable volume systems is 21 instead of 24. This is not uh, easy to be uh, understood at the beginning without the using of building simulation or without some measurements campaign that we are not able to do because at the contest you have to build the house in one month and then there is uh, just later there is the 14 days the two weeks the period of contest so you do not have uh, the time for doing sort of commissioning of your building and uh, the simulation of the contest was able for us to uh, have a sort of uh, preliminary commission of the, of the building. So there were some slight adjustments on the envelope. There were some different uh, uh, operation of the shading. So shading were used at 50% uh, with a larger time step. Uh, the um, ventilation systems had to be turned on and off earlier. 
And the set point temper had to be set to 21. These are the main results. In the end of the story, um, the prototype won the first prize, won the competition. Uh, and we can say that the optimization contributed to increase the cost by, by 15 points. Obviously, when you win this sort of decathlon competition, uh, you have to be it on all the uh, contest, all the 10 contests, but this prototype was the first also uh, in the price of engineering, the price of innovation. So we can see that this was a real example of application uh, of a successful applications or uh, the main capabilities of the main capabilities of simulation based organization method to uh, drive the construction and the operation real prototype of zero energy building. Now, uh, going to the conclusion, because time is, uh, is ended, we can say that the international debate on zero energy buildings is one of the main new driver of innovation, uh, not only in the research activities, because we have seen that the number of research papers has uh, exponentially incremented, but also in the building and construction sector in just the last 10 years, 15 years. Then a second point that we have understood is that uh, even though there are some recipe of that, some protocols, some um, prototypes, many books on zero energy buildings, design strategies, each ZEB study has to be holistic to capture the complexity of the building behavior, of the climate in which the building is, of the operation of the users, etc. So, um, in this sense, simulation-based optimization methods have really the potential to capture this holistic nature of the ZEP approach. Then, the zero energy building is not a final objective, but it is, uh, it keeps being a starting point of future up-to-date research activity that will have the capability to really improve the energy and the environmental performance of the, of the building. Finally, uh, what may seem quite, uh, let's say, scholarly, academic uh, today, uh, as it happened in the past, will really have an impact on the building sector and the building, let's call it industry, on the short term. As the lessons that we have learned, that I have uh, just summarized to you in the last part of my presentation, the lesson from the solar decathlon in China 2018 can testify. So uh, before thanking you for your attention, I would like also to give a special thanks to uh, the uh, research members that are working with me and we, we, we did all these uh, uh, works together and uh, thank you for your attention and now I'm ready for questions and comments. Thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Fabrizio. Uh, so uh, I would like to ask if we have any questions. Uh, we have one question, which is, uh, what incentives uh, does Italy offer for uh, zero-energy zero buildings? Is zero-energy conversation in buildings generally uh, like building-based or neighborhood district-based? So there are two questions. Uh, what is the about the incentives in Italy on zero-energy buildings? Well, the situation in Italy is that uh, uh, since 2015, um, the new building has to be nearly zero energy building. So as most uh, European countries, there has been a debate on uh, how we had to obtain this target. So the nearly zero energy building is characterized in Italy by I would say a large insulation and then uh, the use of uh, um, the exploitation of renewable energy source. So 
a renewable energy ratio which is at least 50 percent so there is not a single target for zero energy building but there is a sort of um, a set of different parameters to be to be verified so it is not uh, i mean so simplified and so easy to 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 get um, the main incentives are for the renovation of existing buildings because as i said to you before um, generally the building has to be uh, nearly zero energy all new buildings all the renovate large renovated buildings but the problem is to drive the decarbonization of all the existing building stock so uh, the idea was especially now after the, the post covid 19 period was to have a sort of financial incentive for renovations of buildings that even though they do not get the target of the zero energy at least they are able to uh, gain at least two classes of the energy classification i mean from uh, c to a or from d to at least b etc so incentive are not really linked to the topic of zero energy uh, building. Then the second question was about the um, the relation between the single building and uh, and the district. This is a topic which is really quite uh, important. Even though I did not concentrate on, on my presentation on that, I may have reported many many research. On that, on that topic. Um, I decided to concentrate on the level of the single building because uh, it was the level of the stage at which in the past I did most of my research. So I would like to present uh, my works better than the works of, of other ones. But uh, again, in Italy, uh, there is being new uh, legislative requirements on what it is called energy communities. So the idea of having um, not single zero energy buildings, but zero energy communities is gaining uh, attention. And uh, again, in the last, let's say, five, ten years should be should be really implemented because it will be much more easier to obtain the energy target at the level of a small community of the small district rather than at the level of the, the single building. Um, can I move to the next question? Um, yes. We have another question uh, lined up. Uh, as people of the same climate, um, should uh, all Mediterranean countries uh, work together on this issue? Uh, what, what are your suggestions? Well, I think it's a good uh, it's a good point because most of the literature we we do know that most of the literature on uh, very energy efficient buildings, especially in Europe, comes from the north of Europe that there is no question on that and we also know that uh, in some contexts is a bit more easy to get the zero energy targets rather than in other climatic costs in fact uh, i wanted to present also um, one of my latest works on the um, optimization of the trade-off between uh, the renewable energy ratio and the and the uh, solar cooling uh, system and the cooling demand because i think that uh, now uh, as a researcher we should concentrate on finding uh, energy efficient systems uh, and renewable system for covering also the uh, cooling demand and this for certain may be done uh, in cooperation between uh, I mean, Mediterranean countries, even though uh, I mean Italy is quite uh, it's quite uh, long, uh, 
So we have very cold climate on, on some spots in some places of the north, and very very hot climate on the on the south. So we have the capability of, of knowing and exploiting a large variety of, of the climate. But uh, the topic of uh, not simply the topic of zero energy for Mediterranean climate, which has been addressed at least in the last uh, in the last ten years, but various research projects. In my opinion, the main topic should be how to exploit renewable energy sources also in the summer time. And it is not so easy. The solar cooling systems are one option. This option is at least in Italy, is not used at all. So we prefer to use heat pumps in winter. Then following the European Directive 28, and heat pumps in winter, which is highly efficient, can exploit renewable energy. So I'm using this energy to cover my 50% factors, etc. So this is not really doing uh, energy efficient buildings but it has to do with um, coping with the legislation okay so the topic for mediterranean nearly that building in my opinion should be how to face the challenge of uh, covering with renewable sources the cooling energy needs Uh, I have another one. Uh, should we focus on new buildings or uh, reno renovate the existing ones to take action quickly? Well, both in the sense, in one way it depends on the on the um, structure of the of the country. Uh, in Italy, which is my country, and which obviously I, I know most. Most of the buildings are existing, and the renovation, uh, I'm not saying the, the new building construction, but also the renovation is very, very low. So uh, in such countries, we should always tackle the problem of existing buildings. But in other countries, and especially if we want to set up new ideas, new process for obtaining the results, I think uh, we should not uh, not only work on existing, but also on new buildings. Uh, in my opinion, in my opinion of, let's say, energy consultant for design, okay, I, I do not have really designed building, but I have been the energy consultant of building designers. New buildings have really the potential to express um, the, the whole set of options you do have as energy designer of the building. And that is very, also, it's very useful for young people, uh, young, uh, I mean, consultants, etc. because if you work on uh, the design of new buildings from the start, uh, from, uh, from some scratches, it is really, really, uh, a fantastic uh, thing to do. And uh, we have a question as actually related to our AI. Uh, so uh, our, a member of our audience is wondering uh, how can artificial intelligence experts help uh, zero energy goals in general? Well, there are many things artificial intelligence has going in the next future to impact the, the zero energy buildings aspect. Um, one is from the design point of view, okay? Uh, I have not presented uh, some, uh, some works, but uh, um, because they are not really, let's say, uh, completed, hmm? uh, we are doing cooperation with, uh, with um, some um, uh, information science uh, scientists, but uh, artificial intelligence has really the potential to improve the accuracy, the, to reduce the computational time uh, of the design problems of Z. And this is one point. 
The second point in which, in my opinion, artificial intelligence will play a major role in new zero energy building is on the operation and on the control. But first of all, we should be able to integrate it into the design and then also we may be able to exploit the capabilities, uh, the better capabilities also in the, in the operation. Obviously, some examples already exist. I mean, there are some examples of exploitation of uh, AE to control, uh, but usually they are linked to the operation of HVSC systems, okay? But we should link this to the, um, the whole building behavior, okay? We have seen that the optimization that are done in a sequence way that are done considering first the envelope, then the systems, then the renewable energies gives some results that can be not as good as the results we can obtain considering in an integrated fashion the whole building as a sum of envelope systems uh, supply sources. So uh, also in this case, imagine the artificial intelligence starting from the simulation activities may have a great impact some years later on the uh, practice. Um, so, um, so um, the audience the questions audience are, questions I think, are over. over. I have one more actually wondering yeah. based on your expertise because um, I want and we talked about the, uh, the current perspective of future energy, like just uh, zero energy buildings, but the, from the future perspectives, um, what are the short and long term uh, goals that you oversee, especially in your research field? Well, the short term short-term uh, goal in my opinion are the one I told before in the sense that uh, we talked about uh, the problem of uh, uh, exploiting to a larger extent renewable energy also in uh, the summer period for the cooling and uh, the integration of artificial intelligence to the design and operation of buildings. So these two are for sure very interesting aspects. A, a third aspect may be related more to the use of uh, um, simulation tools because now simulation tools are becoming more and more widespread but also more and more complex. Uh, it is uh, harder and harder to get the complexity of those tools and uh, the complexity of the mod, the energy models that are done. So in my opinion, there should be also uh, some research activities trying to um, controlling the, the, the large variation of, uh, of input and output data that can be obtained from those design tools. So it is evident that now we do have to use those design tools, but how to use those design tools is not as easy as it can be uh, see an adverse side. And this is also very important for us as teachers, not, not only as researchers, because we do have also uh, the, in our work, we do have to teach uh, building simulation. And it is very, very complicated uh, because of the complexity of the problem, but also the complexity of the tools and the complexity of the problem itself, we are going, we are going to, to model. So this, I think, should be uh, also a topic of interest of some, uh, of some jointly research project at the, at the international level. And finally, well, in the last uh, term, well, uh, we are going towards a sort of buildings that we may call zero power building, not simply zero energy building. 
So in the sense that uh, now the zero energy balance is computed considering very large time step, time step which are uh, one, one week, uh, which are one month. For example, in the Italian legislation, the time step for doing the balancing between the energy produced and the energy consumed is the month. But what happens if we reduce the time step of the energy balance or the balances between input and output to a very low value? So maybe, maybe uh, in the future we will be able to have not zero energy buildings but also zero power buildings. So buildings that instantaneously compensate the energy they need with the energy they produce or they are able to get from other producers that at the same time are using energy. And um, this can also uh, concern me to, to say that uh, uh, in the research activities on zero energy building, I think that um, the researchers from the building physics side and I'm coming from the building physics sector as a, as, a, as a scholar, should cooperate more, should merge more with researchers from the electricity network uh, side. So the electric engineering side, uh, because in one way, most of the energy flows in buildings now uh, are uh, flows of power, of electricity, but also because this balancing, when we reduce the time step, the balancing of the, uh, the power becomes uh, a topic that is much more important for electric engineering, uh, automation engineering, rather than building. Uh, and HVAC systems and so the cooperation with this sector is also in my opinion very very important for the future of the research on zero energy building. Thank you Dr. Fabrizio. Um, I Thank think you. we had it in um, so it was very valuable to uh, talk about the current state and well, I would like to thank you, but especially to thank the organizer, to thank all the people that uh, followed us on this uh, streaming, the, this video stream. Yes. Um, so uh, I would like to thank you all for being here. I would like to thank uh, Team Zero Build. Uh, for bringing us together, uh, despite the, the conditions that is related to pandemic, uh, that we are far apart, but closer together. And I think it's essential to always collaborate and learn from each other. So it was a great platform. Um, thank you for uh, discussing your uh, work with us. Uh, we look forward to seeing uh, more studies from you and more, um, I think, promising case studies in different competitions um, and I would like to thank the audience for being here, listening to us, for asking questions and uh, all the Team Zero for making everything possible. Thank you so much and have a great weekend. Thank you.